The model that we discussed in the previous video was the aggregate expenditures model. The model that we're going to discuss in this video is called the aggregate demand aggregate supply model. Now the aggregate demand aggregate supply model it is described in figures 13.5, 13.6, and uh, 13.7. Take a look at those and you'll be familiar with what I'm drawing here. The aggregate supply, aggregate demand model consists of aggregate supply and aggregate demand curves intersecting. Here's the price level. Here's the level of output. There's the aggregate supply aggregate demand. Already very intuitive because it's just like, what the heck is that? That's a D. Because it's just like the supply and demand model for a particular market. But this is aggregate demand, aggregate supply, described there in chapter 13. Now, obviously, the equilibrium level of output is going to occur at the intersection of the aggregate demand and aggregate supply curves. The equilibrium price level is going to occur at that intersection. Given this aggregate demand, that's what that says, AD, apologize for that, and this aggregate supply, AS, the equilibrium level of output in the economy, the real GDP, if you will, will be here. The equilibrium price level will be here. Very intuitive, very obvious, as a matter of fact, but here's where the analysis comes in. What would happen if there was a shift in one of these curves, either an increase or decrease in aggregate demand, increase or decrease in aggregate supply. Let's suppose that there is an increase in the aggregate demand for some reason. The aggregate demand curve would shift to the right, just like that. The aggregate demand curve would shift to the right. There's the new aggregate demand curve. Here would be the new intersection then. As a result of that, the equilibrium level of economic activity would go up and the equilibrium price level would go up. The economy would speed up but the uh, there would be some inflation as well. Now this increase in the price level and increase in the price level as you know is inflation and this particular type of inflation is called demand pull inflation, demand pull inflation. That's because an increase in spending, as shown by that rightward shifting aggregate demand curve, is speeding the economy up, people are buying more things, the prices of goods and services will rise. The good news, of course, the level of output will go up, that is GDP will go up, and the level of unemployment will go down. Let's see what would happen, on the other hand, if the aggregate supply curve went up. Here's our set of axes right here. Here's output, price level. There's the aggregate supply curve. There's the aggregate demand curve. There's the equilibrium level of output, equilibrium price level. Let's let the aggregate supply curve, let's say, go up, the shift to the right. So the aggregate supply curve shifts to the right like this. Here, the equilibrium level of output will go up. Look what happens to the price level. The equilibrium price level falls. That's good. The price level falls. This increases our real income. It increases the purchasing power of our income and our savings. Price level falling makes us all richer. Equilibrium level of output goes up. More goods and services are produced. That's not a six, that's an O for output. Equilibrium level of economic activity goes up. Unemployment goes down. So here, this rightward shifting aggregate supply curve shows the best of both worlds. A falling price level, falling level of inflation, and an increasing level of output there. By the way, why don't you show uh, they're sitting at your desk, what would happen if the aggregate supply curve shifted to the left? What you're going to find that this is the worst of both worlds because the equilibrium level of economic activity will go down and the equilibrium price level will go up. When the level of output goes down, of course, unemployment will go up and, of course, inflation will go up as well. 
So what we see, if the aggregate supply curve shifts to the left, falling output, rising unemployment, and rising inflation. Now this kind of inflation is known as cost push inflation. Cost push inflation. It's worse than demand pull inflation because cost push inflation means not only are prices going up, but the level of output is going down, as, of course, is the level of unemployment, the worst of both worlds. A rightward shifting aggregate supply curve, the best of both worlds. A leftward shifting out, um, aggregate supply curve, the worst of both worlds. Now, in the assignment section of module 11, what you're going to find is um, a sheet of notes that you can download called Aggregate Demand and Aggregate Supply Model. And here is uh, a curve that you can use for practicing curves, aggregate demand and aggregate supply curve. But here you're going to find the factors that will cause the uh, demand curve, aggregate demand curve to shift either to the right or to the left. Here are factors that will cause the aggregate supply curve to shift either to the right or to the left. Okay, so familiarize yourself with these uh, determinants of aggregate demand and the determinants of the aggregate supply. And if it is not, not clear to you which way the aggregate demand curve or the aggregate demand curve shifts when one of these variables change, post a question or a comment to the discussion board. I'll be happy to answer it and I'll monitor it frequently. Now there's one more issue that I would like to discuss with you regarding the aggregate supply and aggregate demand model, and that is the shape of the uh, aggregate supply curve, short-run aggregate supply curve. Here's output price level. What you're going to find, as explained by the authors, is that the aggregate supply curve actually looks something like this. Flat, 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 rises slightly, rises slightly, rises slightly, starts to rise more quickly, right? It's going to have that looks. At low levels of output, it's going to be kind of flat. At high levels of output, it's going to be steep. Here's the aggregate supply curve. It turns vertical at the point where there is zero unemployment. The economy absolutely could not produce more output. You know, let's suppose that here is the aggregate demand curve right here. Here, then, would be the level of output. Notice that the level of output is very low relative to its capacity. That means unemployment is very high. Okay? Let's let the aggregate demand curve shift to the right. If the aggregate demand curve were to shift right there, the level of output would be higher, the level of unemployment would be lower. This point right here we could call high unemployment, H-U. Here we could call this moderate unemployment. This might be 10% or more. This might be 7 to 10%. Now, the aggregate demand curve is shifting to the right. Output is going up, but notice nothing is happening to the price level. Here's the reason why. The people who are going to get hired at high levels of unemployment are going to be the most productive people in the pool of unemployed. These are the people that are not going to need supervision. They're, they're going to be able to hit the ground running. The unit costs of production will not rise when you bring on very productive workers. Let's let the, the aggregate demand curve rise some more. The aggregate demand curve shifts to the right. Notice here we're getting low unemployment. I'll call that LU, low unemployment. This might be from 5 to 7%. That's a 7. I screwed that up. That's, that's a 7 right there. 5 to 7%. Remember, 5%, 4 to 5% is full unemployment. Remember the concept of natural unemployment. But notice what happens as we start to approach full employment. The price level here starts rising. Why? Because from here to here, less productive people are going to be employed. These are people who are going to need training. These are people that are not going to be as skilled. These are people 
that you employ, it's going to take two of these people to produce a widget, whereas the people employed here, it would take one. So you can see that the unit cost of output is going to go up, and so firms will only make this additional output available if there's an increase in price. Let's let the aggregate demand curve rise here till we get to a point of full employment. That's 4 to 5 percent unemployment. This is full employment right here. Notice what happened as the aggregate demand curve shifted to the right. The price level started to rise even faster. Why? Because the last people to be hired, last people in the pool of unemployed, these are going to be the least productive workers. These are the ones that are going to need a lot of supervision, a lot of training. And so as a result of hiring these less productive people, unit costs of production are going to rise and firms will only make the supply available if uh, they get a higher price. So you can see at high levels of unemployment the aggregate demand curve is flat. As we approach full employment the aggregate demand curves get steeper and we start to experience demand pull inflation as um, aggregate demand curve shifts to the right.